Hi, welcome to my session on cleaning the cleaning the Tete Jumeau head. I'm doing this by the saw fired greenware method where it's been fired to an 019 first. I cut the eyes in the greenware stage and that was another little session that's on your DVD here. Um, currently what I'm going to do is clean the saw fired greenware. Okay, now it's been fired to an 019 which makes it a lot easier to clean than when it's fired to an 018. It's much more difficult to do the 018. It's almost like cleaning cement. So I always fire, saw fire to an 019. Okay, there's only a few tools that I need here. I have a little piece of the old time pink uh, wet scrubbers that we always used to have available. They are no longer available. I've not been able to find them anywhere. So if you do not have one of these, basically the glove will work for you also. It'll just take you a little bit longer. Okay, I have a vinyl surgical glove on my hand that does an excellent job of cleaning the head. Then I just need an X-Acto knife to take the seam line off and several brushes that I'm going to use for around the features. And these are the white nylon bristle stain cleaning brushes, they're usually called. A lot of times they're used for um, painting stains on ceramic pieces. Okay, so if you do have the wet scrubber, I very seldom ever use the pink sandpaper side. I usually just use the real white smooth um, very smooth side doesn't put any additional scratches in the greenware okay now I've soaked this head in the tub of water for about an hour now is all that's necessary you can actually put some uh, like Johnson's baby shampoo in your water and just kind of gives you a little bit of a sudsing action that helps clean also I currently do not have any in this water though I'm out of it Okay, so I'm going to dip my X-Acto knife in the water because I want my tools to be wet also. Okay, so I'm going to start with my knife and I'm going to carefully scrape the seam off. And then all these shavings that I'm gathering on my knife, I'm just going to, you know, release them into the water so they're out of the way here. So I'm going to pick the worst of the seam line off with my X-Acto knife. Go around the top of the head. Down around by the ear. Okay, now I've got the seam line removed with the X-Acto knife. I'm going to take the white side of the pink wet scrubber and I'm going to carefully go over my seam lines with the smooth side. Do not use the pink sandpaper side unless you've got a really, really bad mold that's got a very heavy seam that it's the only way you can get it off, but the majority of your molds you're going to find are, you know, pretty well made that you don't have those huge humongous seam lines on. Okay, so again I'm going all over the seam line. And down the other side. Okay, I'm going to go over it one more time here. Now I'm not getting this wet scrubber anywhere near the features on the face. There's way too much that can happen taking off your features if you get too close on the face with this thing. Okay, so now I have the paste on here that I've worked up from this. I'm not going to rinse that yet. 
this is still very damp from dipping in the water so I can take this paste with my glove and now I'm going to start going over the entire head I'm going to do the front of the face just using the flat part of my fingers, my palm. And like I say, I haven't rinsed this yet. I'm still moving this paste that I've made on there all around over the head. By using the paste, if you have some little tiny um, pinholes, imperfections, a lot of times that paste will go in there and fill those in. If they're very big, yes, after you've rinsed your head off, you're going to have to go in and manually fill those. Okay, now my paste is starting to dry out a little bit to where it's not smoothing easily on the head for me. And I don't want to force it here because then that's actually going to make scratches. So you've got to find a happy medium here as to what is just damp enough. So all I'm going to do is dip a couple of my fingers in the water, get just enough on the glove that it wets everything again and then I can continue rubbing here. Okay, I'm doing the forehead, round the ears. I want to get make sure I get the back of the head also. If your head is not smooth, clean smoothly, your wash is not going to be smooth and you want to make sure you get a really nice wash on there also doesn't hurt to give the inside of inside hole of the top of the head a once over and the neck hole make sure any little tiny cracks that might be there are sealed in you know from taking the knife and cutting that open Okay, now what I'm going to do is I want to make sure the features are cleaned well. So I'm going to take this white bristle stain brush and I'm going to go over the eyebrow area. I'm going to go around the eye sockets, make sure everything's cleaned there. Okay. I'm going to do this eye socket, that eyebrow area. Now I'm going to go over the nose. Want to make sure that's gone over and cleaned well. I'm going to go over the mouth and the chin. Okay, I'm going to use this brush and I'm going to go around the ears. Get the other ear over here. Okay. Now I have all this paste on the face. It's still damp. I'm going to give it a final once over with the glove over all the larger areas. The forehead, both cheeks. I want to make sure the cheeks are nice and smooth. I'm going to go down and do the neck. Okay, pop over here and do the other cheek. My paste is starting to get a little bit dry, so I'm going to get just a few drops of water on my fingertips again. Okay, now this is probably pretty well cleaned. But I won't know that until I would now take this head over to the sink 
and under running water with a very uh, fluffy like large dusting brush I would totally rinse this under the running water removing all of that paste from all of the recessed areas make sure it's totally clean and all the paste is rinsed off of there then I'm going to set it off to the side for about five minutes and let some of that surface <coughs> excuse me let some of that surface water um, evaporate off of there when it's real real shiny and wet after just rinsing it you really can't see any of your imperfections it needs to sit for about five minutes let the surface water dry off of there and then you'll be able to tell whether there's any imperfections or not if you see any then start the whole process over again you know using you know now you're basically just using the glove or the brush you don't need the exacto knife you don't need the wet scrubber you would just be going it over you know going over it either with your hand with the vinyl glove on or with your brush and then you know re-rinse it again let it sit five minutes check and make sure it's good you know always look at it through like your optivisor to make sure you're seeing everything that you know you possibly can okay now when it comes to firing this you want your head to fire to a true cone six depending on how your kiln works um, you know some kilns are going to fire a little hot some kilns are going to fire a little cool you need to do some experimentation with your kiln and make sure you're firing to a true cone six if you put in three witness cones for a five a six and a seven your six should bend like to about you know if you're thinking of it as a clock it would point to around three to four o'clock okay the cone five is going to be over fired and that's actually going to bend all the way over pointing down at whatever you've got the cone sitting on a cone seven is going to be slightly under fired so it's going to be just barely bent it's going to be at maybe one o'clock two o'clock at the most but if you've got on your cone six if it bends to like three to four o'clock like the position on you know a clock would be then you should have a perfect cone six firing and your head should turn out great um okay i think that's oh one other thing i wanted to go over with with you also is i like to in order to get a really nice glow to my bisque i like to after this head's totally rinsed Oh, and by the way, you don't have to let the head totally dry, you know, sit there for a couple hours and dry before you put it in the kiln. Once the surface water is dried off of there and you can see that it's good, you can load the kiln right then and start it. The piece does not have to dry totally. It's not going to affect it at all. Okay, what I like to do is fire the head first to a cone 06, which may sound a little strange. That's a ceramic cone but I like to fire to an 06 then I take the head back out spray it with a spray bottle of water and then I just use a sponge and completely wipe down the head and then I replace it in the kiln and fire to a true cone 6 the reason I do that is with that extra little bit of firing part way and then kind of smoothing over it again I seem to get a really smooth uh, bisque that has a slight glow to it because it's been fired twice that's totally optional it's not anything you have to do your bisque will come out just fine going to a true cone six just the one time but you do get just a added little bit of a glow if you do it the other way and fire it twice okay that should pretty well take you through the soft fire greenware cleaning and the firing okay thanks